On this edition of Influence Living, you're going to meet Margaret. Her parents dedicated her to Satan but then a greater force influenced her life. Then you're going to meet Xander. Xander is just a sharp young man who's allowing someone to influence his life, and today he's a United States Marine. And then finally, you're going to meet Glenn. Glenn was a professional skateboarder, but skateboarding wasn't the greatest influence on his life. You'll hear about it. All that and much more right here on Influence Living. Welcome to this edition of Influence Living. I'm your host, Wade. Here on Influence Living, we ask individuals around the world what has influenced you, particularly if you've gone through a difficult time in life. How did you make it through? You'll be amazed at the stories we hear today. First up on Influence Living on this program is a lady by the name of Margaret. She is from New Zealand. At the age of three, her parents dedicated her to Satan but she's gonna tell you what really influenced her life. Listen to her story. I came from a very broken, dysfunctional background. Uh, the Lord has shown me that because of generational sin that I, and it was satanic, that I was dedicated to Satan at birth and then I experienced satanic ritual abuse. Mm. And then I, part and parcel of it all, which I understand now, I experienced incest from my father from about three till the age of 10, 11. So you can see from that picture that there was a very, very broken, broken person. Out of that, I went into a dysfunctional marriage for 15 years, and it was violent. I loved him, but he was an alcoholic, so I experienced violence in the marriage. But the Lord gave me a word and said, I've heard your prayers, I've seen your tears, I'm going to give to your life 15 years. So out of that, I, in the marriage, I was, because of what I'd gone through as a child, as a teenager, I didn't trust, I was broken. In the marriage, I didn't want to live, I wanted to die. And one night after a really bad, experience with my husband. I had been advised by my doctor to go to a meeting, which they call Alcoholics Anonymous, but the other side of the coin is a family support group called Al-Anon, which is the support for the wife and the children. And I went to that and nothing was going and I wanted to change him. I didn't know it was about for me, for me changing. And so I had an experience one night when he came home drunk. He came in the room and he grabbed me and kissed me passionately and said, this is your Wally. And he stood up and he said, this is your alcoholic and backhanded me across the face and he was a big man. So in my heart, I just, I could have stepped into insanity because one minute you're in euphoria and the next minute you're just in another place of terror. And I in my heart said that prayer that I'd learned in Al-Anon, God grant me serenity and a presence that I've never, ever experienced came down over me. That was what you call my 
my spiritual awakening. Out of that, there was an ongoing journey and and I was so, so full of fear. In the end, in the turning point was he threw a carving knife at me. I saw it coming and ducked and ran. So, as you can hear from my story, um, my heart is to see people healed and made whole. So coming back to that, I was so, so broken and didn't know what to do. And I was going to walk down the end of my street where I lived with my three sons. And I wanted, I knew there was a horse paddock at the end of our street and I just wanted to lay down and die like a dog. I wasn't coming back. And my steps turned and went down to some people who had been, had cell groups. These friends led me to the Lord and then took me to a church. It was an Anglican church and I remember the salvation prayer. And when they said, you know, do you want to accept Jesus as your saviour and, you know, about, you know, asking forgiveness for your sins, I thought, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm not a murderer. That's what I thought. And it's like I opened my heart and I invited Jesus and the turning point in my life was that wall of fear that had been there all my life. The Lord took it away and he has taken a vessel, his child who he created in his image, who was broken, smashed. I went to bed one night and I said, Lord, I want to die, I don't want to wake up. And I woke up in the morning and Derek Prince was on the radio and he said, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So out of my life, I am a testimony to the glory of our God because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We love not our lives to the death. And out of what God has taken, it is an encouragement to everybody to know that God can take the broken pieces like a smashed vase and put it back together, but put it back together even greater than it was before because that's his, his restoring power and his deliverance and his healing. And out of what the Lord's taken me through, I now, my heart is for Isaiah 61, and he gave me a ministry called The Well, healing the brokenhearted, setting the captives free, opening prison doors, seeing the lame to walk and the blind to see and the deaf to hear. So my testimony is to encourage and build and give hope. I'm sure that you found Margaret's story very intriguing, didn't you? There is a greater power than the power of Satan, and that is the power of God. Jesus Christ is God, and Jesus is, uh, because he is God, he is the most powerful force in all the world. And she found that God could really influence her life. She made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, and everything changed. The same can happen to you. Maybe you haven't been dedicated to Satan by your parents, but maybe you have never aligned yourself with God. If you haven't done so, God says, actually, you're his enemy. It's not good to be the enemy of the most powerful force in the universe, God Almighty. Would you like to get on his side? Would you like to make sure that when you die, you will go to heaven? Jesus said this, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. There's only one way to find yourself in eternity with God when you die, and that is through Jesus. Margaret prayed a very simple prayer to begin her journey with Jesus, and you can do the same thing wherever you're watching this, whether you're in Australia, or maybe you're in India, or somewhere in North America, maybe in the Middle East, or, or maybe you're in Europe watching today. You can say the same prayer and begin that journey with Jesus. Come on, just say it with me right now, wherever you are, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're God. I believe you died for my sins. Please forgive me of all my sins. Today I make you my Lord. Amen. 
I want to say congratulations. If you just prayed that prayer, you've begun the journey with Jesus. Now, we've got to grow up in our faith. What do you do? You begin to pray to God on a daily basis. Talk to Him. And He can hear your prayers. He promises us that He hears our prayers. And then the second thing that you need to do is make sure that you read in the Christian Bible. Go to the book of John. Find out who Jesus is. Thirdly, go to a local Christian church near you and say, listen, I want to grow up in my faith. Can you teach me? What do I do? I've received Jesus. Where do I go next? What do I do? If they don't help you, you find a Christian church that will. And then lastly, if you would, let us know that you've made a decision to follow Christ. Or perhaps you have a God story. You're already a believer and you have a great story of what God has done in your life. And maybe you'd like to be on Influence Living someday. Would you send us that information as well? Uh, if you would, just mail us at our P.O. Box there in Orlando. You see the details right there on your screen. Or you can email us at wade at influenceliving.com. That's wade at influenceliving.com. Or you could message us on Facebook. Go to Influence Living and find us right there on Facebook. Go to YouTube and find us as well to see some of our previous programs. We would love to have you connect with us. Well, up next here on Influence Living, we're going to meet a young man who is going to talk about God's influence on his life. Right now, Xander is a United States Marine, and he told us this. I was raised in Florida. Um... It's a, it's a nice place. Uh, always lived in a good neighborhood. Um, lived there till I was about four. And from four years old, uh, my dad uh, was working over in Israel at the embassy. So uh, we wanted to spend time with him and wanted to share that experience. So uh, moved over there, um, lived there for a year. Came back at five years old, back to the States. Moved back to Florida. Lived with my uh, grandparents for a while. They had a, always had a nice house, always good caring family around me. Um, when I was about five, I, uh, I accepted Christ on uh, summer vacation uh, with my family in Georgia, around a campfire. Um, from there, just been walking with God. Um, have had falling outs before, um, trying to find myself, trying to find what worth I am to the world. I guess every man struggles with that. Um, but overall just had good experiences in life. When I was five and received Christ, um, it, was a, it was a powerful experience. I knew that God wanted me to do it at a young age. And the way I came to Christ is through one of my children's pastors, Brother Barry. Um, literally the Sunday before we left for our vacation, uh, he gave a, a speech on Christ and heaven and hell and even though we were children he never used a term for it as oh this is where the sinners go or this is where the bad people go who don't accept Christ it's always hell and I always respected him for that for being honest with us and being straight and what he told me about it and what he told me about God is what wanted me to come to Christ. He always portrayed God as a good person, which God is always good. So that's why I wanted to accept Christ because I wanted to be with him. I didn't want to go to, to hell. My, my family's great. Um, got a good, loving mom, um, always there for me, always willing to help me with school, always <laughs> revising papers for me. Um, my dad, awesome guy, love him to death. He, uh, trained me in so many ways to be a leader, to, to be compassionate towards people, to, to always humble yourself to be there for people no matter what their circumstances are, whatever you're going through, it's always better to help them and have to not worry about your problems but worry about other people who really need that, that guidance or that, that help and that light from God because most people in hard times don't, don't see the light from God even if they're followers or even if they're not, not Christians. Um, and even that light will, will give them a sense and plant a seed. Um, through the gym, um, I've gained not just being strong physically, but mentally and spiritually. It's, it trains you to, to be strong in any circumstance that you have or any, any, any hard times you, you face in life, um, our gym is very based off of Christ and that's our ministry is 
through there we've had people come to Christ, even good friends of mine. Um, even my dad, uh, he's been, he was gone uh, half of my life, not because uh, uh, or we had family problems, we never had them when we were younger. Every family argues, but it's it, not what he did. He works, he works for the government, so he would go and take trips overseas. 60 days, um, sometimes maybe to a year and so, but never, never too long. Um, but even over there, he, he'd go to Christ and always try and help the guys over there who, who were lost. So all around, I have a great family. And to every other 15-year-old out there who's not walking Christ or who is but is, uh, isn't on the path, you can't do it alone. You always need help through family, friends, other Christians, uh, mostly God. I'm here with uh, a group of 15 people, a lot of friends here also, and we're here uh, helping people in Nevis uh, build a church. And so we were spackling the walls. We were supposed to be here <laughs> putting up a roof, but uh, obviously God doesn't want the roof to arrive yet. He wants us to do, do greater work here, if it, even if it is spackling walls and chiseling away at walls. Um, but we're just finding work to do. We're uh, building shelves for the storage under the building. We are doing anything we can to help these people. Specifically of what I've been doing in the jobs here is uh, chiseling away at the extra concrete that they've laid. Um, we're chiseling out edges that are rough for the door frames, um, helping uh, any way I can uh, with whatever I need to do, putting concrete down. Um, mixing concrete, making new batches. It's, it's all around a great experience, very humbling, um, but it's just great to do. I believe all 15 year olds and all teenagers should go on a mission trip once because, yeah, we can say first world problems like it's a joke, but really here, the people, they don't have that. They're in their own first world, but they don't have their problems that we do. They, it's, they're all easy going, they're all, friendly they all don't have a worry in the world they know where their food's going to come from they know they can pay their income it's all from god so they're not worried about it and that's what i think we need to learn is we shouldn't worry about simple things in life like we do back at home well i just want to remind you you're watching influence living thanks for watching from wherever in the world you may be watching on whatever device you might be watching I think that you really enjoyed Xander's story. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Glenn. Now, Glenn was a sponsored skateboarder here in the United States. And uh, something greater, though, than skateboarding influenced him. That's God. Here's his story. was one of those kids that was... Um, really super shy, I had a fear of man, I didn't know that at the time, very timid. It was one of those um, little boys that just kind of ran behind mom's leg when people came over I didn't know. When I had conversations with people, I couldn't even look them in the eye. It was just really, it, it kind of paralyzed me a little bit, you know, growing up and even in my teen years. I started skateboarding when I was eight years old and it became a passion. And I got really good at it when I became an older teenager and um, I actually had four sponsors before um, I actually stopped skateboarding. Uh, competitively, but I still do it today. Most of the time when I competed was, um, started off local um, in the Orlando, Florida area, um, and kind of a little bit outside of that, and some in South Florida. Um, went down to South Florida quite a bit too, uh, in competitions down there. I was born and raised in Miami and living in Orlando now, so, and where most kids were, my age were, you know, in high school and going out partying and, and you know, doing crazy stuff. I was at home skateboarding. So it kind of kept me out of trouble a little bit, but because of that, I became really good. And so that's when some of my friends started telling me, you need to compete, you need to compete. And so I, I started entering into the amateur contest in my age groups and started doing really well, placing first and second a lot. And it got to a point where some of my friends were like, you need to get sponsored, you need to find a sponsor. And so I did, I actually the first two sponsors, I pursued them and it was local skate surf shop type places and then started entering into the uh, uh, sponsor division. And after doing that, that's where you, where you start getting noticed by some other bigger name companies out in California. And so I picked up two sponsors from out in California. And uh, I did that for about three and a half, four years before the Lord just intercepted my life. 
wasn't raised in a Christian home, so just really didn't really know much about the Lord. I kind of really didn't know much about Christianity. In fact, the reason why sometimes I actually went to church is because of some girls. So it was actually the wrong reason to go, but almost like a joke kind of thing. You know, it wasn't anything I considered to be of any value. I really came to know Christ um, through a uh, conference that I went to with my brother. It was a business conference. It was 1987, September of 87. At that time, I was still real heavily into skateboarding. I remember it was a Friday and a Saturday. It was all these speakers and stuff, motivational speakers and all that. And then I remember Saturday night, they were done like, hey, we got a Sunday service, church service, everyone's invited. And right away, I'm thinking, oh, I'm not going to that. I'm, I'm going to sleep in at the hotel room, you know? And, and uh, so that next morning comes around, my brother's knocking on the door and he's like, come on, come on. I'm like, no, I'm not going. They, they actually like made me, they forced me to go because I was pretty adamant not going. And they made me like, I open up the door, my brother grabbed some clothes here, put these on your, he was like making me go. So like, okay, so I went, but man, you know, God, God had that day appointed for me because the, um, my background is, like I said, was one of those kids that was really shy and had that fear of man, very timid, and even up to that point in my life, and I was 18 years old. The message was, was on 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And when he was talking on that scripture, I'm, I, he'd really, I just really zoned in on it. I'm like, man, I want that. I, how can I get that? How can I, because I knew the type of person that I was, and I saw other people around me, how they had more confidence, and I'm like, I want that, you know? I'm, I was almost kind of tired of where I was. And so that's when I was listening, he was just, God was just drawing me in it for that message, just stirring me up. And, you know, there's something, you know, we all have, you know, if you have those issues in your life, there's something that's hindering you. And that's when he explained that, that there's, there's sin in our lives that, that hinders us from having that type of relationship with a God that can give us that confidence and power and love and sound mind. And so um, I'm like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? And that's when he, he gave the gospel message how Jesus died for our sins. And if we give our lives to him, that he can work in our lives. When he gave an altar call and he was like, whoever wants to do this, whoever wants to do it, I'm inviting you forward to the altar to give your life to Christ. And he and today is a new day for you. And um, man, I, 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 I was way up in the, what they call the nosebleed section of the, of the arena. It was huge arena. And I, I, I ran, man. I was like, I want this. You know, I want to know who this Jesus is. I want to have him in my life because because I knew where I was and I'm like, man, I, I want to get rid of this sin. I, you know, we all, when you come into encounter with Christ, you, you're all of a sudden aware of your sin. You know what I mean? And so I went and I, I wholeheartedly, I, I was like, I'm not going to do this just, you know, willy nilly or I, I'm giving my whole life to you, Jesus. And when I did, man, it made a huge transformation in my life. And I can totally say today that I can look you in the eye and have a conversation with you because there was a time where I just could not do that. When I went home from that, I still was in skateboarding. And skateboarding, because I was doing it so much and, and skating competitively, it was my God. And it was about two weeks after I gave my life to Christ that I was having dinner with my brother and his wife. I was going, getting ready to go home. I was going out to the car and I had one of those cars that had the hatchback. I didn't have a trunk, but I had a hatchback and all my skateboard stuff was in there and I was putting something in, in the hatchback and I saw it there and it's the first time, it was two weeks, two week old Christian, first time I ever heard just the Spirit of the Lord just drop something in my, in my spirit. And the word was this, are you willing to give it up? And my stuff was all right there in the car. And so I look up and I kid you not, this is just totally blew me away. I look up and at the end of my brother's street, there's a dumpster, a big dumpster of trash. And so I did it. I picked it up. I pulled the skateboard out of it. I rode down with the bag on my shoulder, big old duffel bag, and I chucked it all in the dumpster because I knew that's what God wanted me to do. Um, it was a guy that was doing skateboard ministry in an indoor skate park and um, had the opportunity to speak to the kids, tell my testimony, um, work with kids. We did small groups and then we'd bring all these kids in the skate park and we'd, we'd share a message of Christ with them. And then they got the skateboard free for the rest of the night. That was a, such a fun experience for me. God puts you in those situations where you don't feel like you're equipped, you don't feel like you're capable, but you know He's calling you to do it. You just make those steps and He'll, he'll, he'll provide the words to say. He'll, he'll build that confidence in you that you need to be able to accomplish that task. And I found that to be true so much in my life. I still find it to be true. There, there are times where uh, that little timidity that you, I used to have back in the day, it, it kind of creeps up sometimes. And I gotta say, you know what? No, God, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Glenn's story is pretty cool, isn't it? He's a cool dude, man. He was uh, skateboarding when he was young, and he's still an adult, and he's still skateboarding. Absolutely amazing. 
Glenn's story is challenging, isn't he? He said that Jesus Christ made all the difference in his life. He was searching for something and he found it in Jesus. If you as well, like Glenn, are searching for answers, if you're searching to make sure that when you die, you'll go to heaven, then you need to consider Jesus Christ as well. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and there's no other way to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. It's our belief in Jesus. It's not going to church that makes sure we go to heaven. It's not even being good that gets us into heaven. It's our faith in Jesus Christ. Now, out of that, hopefully we'll be good and, and live well, but that's not the way that we get into heaven. It is our relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what Glenn found out, and that's what I want you to know as well. You could pray with me right now like Glenn would have prayed, a simple little prayer like this, believing in your heart. Say this, Jesus, come on, say it with me. Jesus, I believe in you. I know that you're God. I know that I've sinned. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I accept you into my life. I make you my Lord right now. Amen. It's as easy as that. Now, what you've got to do is grow up in your faith. There's more than one just little prayer. But now we begin to live and go on life's journey serving God Almighty. How do you do it? Begin to talk to God on a daily basis. We call it prayer. Make that part of your daily routine. And then begin to read in the Christian Bible. Go to the book of John. Find out who Jesus really is. And then read God's Word on a regular basis. Finally, go to a local Christian church and say, Listen, I, I prayed uh, and received Jesus into my life. How do I grow up? If they don't grow you up, find a Christian church that will. And then finally, at Influence Living, we would love to be praying with you and for you. And would you let me know that you've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ? And perhaps uh, you're a believer already, and maybe you've got a great God story. Perhaps you can be on Influence Living as well. Maybe you'll send us your story. Here's how you can contact us. Our P.O. Box is in Orlando, Florida. There are the details right there on your screen. There, just write us there if you'd like to. Then also you could email us at wade at influenceliving.com. That's wade at influenceliving.com. Or you could message us through Facebook. Go to Influence Living, message us there. You can also see our previous shows on YouTube or on Facebook. Just simply search Influence Living. We would love to have you join us along this journey. Well, that about does it for this edition of Influence Living. Once again, I'm Wade. I was your host. Thanks so much for joining me. Listen, one more thing. If you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, I pastor a church by the name of Greenway Church. Go to greenwaychurch.com to find out uh, more about our church, where we are, our service times on Sundays and so forth. But you can also find out how to catch us live on either Facebook or on YouTube. So join us there if you'd like to on Sundays, or you could just see previous services and previous sermons that I have preached. We'd love to have you join us at Influence Living and also Greenway Church, either online or in person. All right, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.